another riveting session of Wondrous, Health, Wondrous Roots, Your Health from the Ground Up. My name is Rebecca Becky Montrone. I have a business here at uh, um, in Keene, New Hampshire called Wondrous Roots. I am a holistic healthcare practitioner practitioner with a degree in holistic nutrition. I'm also an herbalist and have a full um, herbal botanical pharmacy, I guess, if you would say some herbalists call it their armamentarium. Um, but anyway, so a full fledged, like I don't just make a few things. We have a lot of different formulas and have some over 250 plus um, liquid extracts that we make here, uh, usually via cold percolation technique. And um, and then I mix and blend those to make uh, formulas for different health issues, whatever those might be. And I also, uh, we also have a whole skincare line, which is really, um, I think, fabulous and, and um, very popular, very um, intense uh, skincare with uh, probably, in my opinion, um, just better than anything out there. And I don't say that to market it. I just say that because... One day, I mean, I just came up with this, uh, the Wondrous Root Skin Formula, which was the first thing I did. And this was some, oh, when I first started. So probably, I don't know, 18 years ago now. And it, it's, it, it morphed over, over, the, over a few years into what it is now. But it started out more as a salve and I did it more as a, um, as a therapeutic for stopping, you know, for healing bed sores, doing things like that, which it still does. Um, but it was more of a soft consistency, but basically you take a big pot of fantastic oils, olive oil, fractionated coconut oil, um, uh, grapeseed oil. Uh, these things are extremely good for the skin in and of themselves. And then into that are infused some 15 plus different berries, roots, herbs, uh, whatever part of the plant works for the skin. And then um, to that, that is um, extracted via a long time over very, you know, the heat is kept low, so we don't lose any value to those plants. And then, um, and then uh, that is strained and to that we add a, a bunch of other nut nutritive oils like macadamia nut oil, sea buckthorn berry, which I'm gonna be talking about today. Um, uh, gosh, sesame oil, um, tamanu oil, um, kukui nut oil, just these really exquisite oils for the skin. So, and then some essential oils added to that, that really, um, kick it up. And so, uh, we found that it's just entirely healing to the skin. So it's used to prevent radiation burn and people going in for radiation therapy for cancer. We use it um, to um, heal bed sores that won't heal given normal uh, methods and people who are, um, you know, bedridden, that kind of thing. So super therapeutic, but it, it is designed for your skin. And so if it does all of those things for extreme skin conditions, you can imagine it's just really great for, for skin care. Um, so anyway, we have several different items in that line. I'm going to be just mentioning my bug blast, which uh, is like flying off the shelf right now because um, of the season that we're all glad is here, the season upon us. And um, it's, uh, it's just really great to, um, to be able to offer things that are, are natural, that are not harmful to the skin. Our bug blast is actually very nutritive, uh, nourishing to the skin. And uh, you don't have to worry about washing it off because it's all poisonous and you can use it for your dogs too. Um, so anyway, our number here is 603-439-2603. Our open shop hours are uh, 930 to 5, Monday through Friday. We are on the third floor of the Miller Forge building, building located in downtown Keene on Roxbury Street. Uh, you can also reach out from our websites shopwondersroots.com and I'm very pleased to announce I redid a remake on our regular website this week. I did this last weekend and I'm going to show you, um, I'll share my screen in a bit and just show you the, uh, the facelift there if you haven't happened to go. And I wouldn't really expect that you had by now. Had to visit my website or done that. So um, I'll give you, a sh I'll let you see that. Let me just um, find myself back here on the Zoom. Here we go. Um, Okay, so let's see if you want to participate and feel free. I love it when you do. Um, you can go to the chat 
down at the bottom, you can, well, I don't know where it is. It depends on what kind of a screen you're using, but you go to the chat, you can find that. You can go to the raise your hand, as Susan did when she let me know that I was not, uh, that I was muted. Um, you can raise your hand as um, Joe does. Joe's with us today too. And Joe, when Joe speaks, he likes to talk. He used to call on, in on the radio all the time, which I loved when I was on the radio. So um, you can raise your hand and I'll call on you and um, we'll all be able to hear you. Okay. Um, without further ado, I will go to um, share my screen. And I am going to go to my... Let's see, share, remind me later, and I'm sharing this, good. It doesn't look like I have the green box around it yet though. I'm supposed to have like a green box. I think I'll st stop my share and try that again. Share, go here, share. Okay, that looks right. I think you guys can see that now. i put my par my participants here so I can see who's in my class and who's participating in my chat. Keep doing that wrong. Okay. Oh, I don't think I, I, I also didn't say I am a, for those who are listening and you, you might not be tuned in to the class live now and be my, among my regular students or a guest, but I am a holistic healthcare practitioner and I see people in private consultation. So you can get in touch with me again, 603-439-2603. Um, and uh, you can also reach out to me from my website. So now I will show you my new website. So I'm going to go, let's see, I'll go down here. All my old newsletters are going to link to old pages. Um, so it takes a little while, you know, so now I've updated all of that kind of thing. But if we go here to our services, I can just kind of talk that through. So I charge a one-time fee. It's kind of like a membership fee, if you will, of $250. The first session is around 90 minutes. I say 90 minutes, but it usually takes longer. Um, and uh, have a, anyway, that's a comprehensive. And then uh, after that, I follow you. Um, and that's included with that one-time fee. Uh, meet and greet, if you're just wondering if if working with me might be a good fit for you, or you have something um, quick you just want to talk about or something you can do a half hour meet and greet. And if you do decide to go forward with a full consultation, that $50 just comes off. Um, we shop online. Also, you know, I haven't mentioned, uh, oftentimes I custom formulate things for people. So I have things for say, um, like for instance, I have a formula C plus for cancer. And um, I have a woman who wanted that without uh, a couple of the, the herbs in there for a couple of reasons. And so just to do that, or somebody might say, can you make me uh, mix this up? Because um, I have all of those herbal tinctures in stock. And so just, just so you know, you can always do that, but you got to give me a shout, shout out, either call me or do that. But anyway, I just want to show you the new website briefly. Um, if you knew what the other one looked like, it just was like, I want to start um, blogging almost every day because I have so much as you, as you all know, I have so much I want to talk about all the time. And so I was starting to do that last Sunday and I just thought, oh, I, this, this website just drives me crazy. So I decided to do that, spend my time doing that instead. So this is new. Um, it's just got a fresh new look to it. Uh, it's about... Um, you can get to the shopping there. Um, some lovely photos from the from Dale's area making all the skincare products. Um, then my bio, brief story, our team updated that kind of a little bit more about everybody, all the members of our team. I say this is the family farm, right? And then Krista will be added, will be coming. I mentioned that last week uh, in September. So really excited about that. Okay. And then, oh, videos. So the one thing that's missing is I've had all my archives since 2015, just about every newsletter at, able to be accessed on my old website. And that is just like a labor of, time a time 
intensive labor. So what I'm doing now is when you go to videos, you will see the latest videos, the latest six, right? And then I will, um, and then when you go to the video, you find the newsletter that goes with it in the video description. So say you went to this one, um, you would, you go to YouTube. Sorry, it's going to, you're going to hear me talking. And some testosterone is aging. And then you get, this is where you would go to get that. Okay. All right. So you, you understand that. Sorry, that was annoying. Okay. And then um, the blog. Um, these are the same blog posts that you'll find on Shop Wonders Roots as well. So they'll be added to each one. And I posted some that I'd written in the past, but I'll be adding to those regularly. Um, so you can get written information. Say, I talked about this, like I should put something up there. I should do a blog, a short blog on cucumber seed extract powder today. I should do one on um, the DPEA and the SEA that I'm going to be talking about. Very exciting for chronic pain. I'm, I'm totally over the top about that. I can't wait to tell you about it. And then um, also, what did I else do? Am I talking about today? Um, 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 cucumber seed. Oh, omega seven, a seven. Omega seven. You've heard of three, six, and nine, but have you heard of omega seven? Especially for dry conditions. Very, very, um, very interesting and very exciting. Okay, so go back here. All right, so I'm in my newsletter, which I'm going to just kind of take off on some helpful things you might not know. Uh, lately, I've been covering some topics in depth during our Saturday class, among them progesterone, uh, butyrate, magnesium, sunshine and sunscreens recently, hyperparathyroidism, magnesium, bone health, the calcium question. So we've been going over those things in most recent times. Um, and, uh, oh, what I also wanted to tell you is, um, I'm sorry, but when I was showing you in the video section of the, um, of the page, um, you can go to, yes, there's a link there to both the YouTube channel and the Rumble channel where all of the videos, since I've been doing the videos are there, um, more on YouTube than Rumble, but all of them in recent months are on both. So just, just so you know that. Okay. Um, Purring in the background of my mind are some things I am just itching to tell you about. The only natural remedy for that itch is to tell you. So in the lesson plans today, cucumber seed for bone health, osteoporosis, omega-7 from sea buckthorn oil, from Sjogren's syndrome and other dry conditions, P-E-A-S-E-A, -E -E and I say those there because they're very long words, and I still have to practice pronouncing them so they can just like roll off my tongue. But this is probably the most exciting thing that I've learned for, for some time. Um, I, I say that all the time though, don't I? Cause that, I just keep learning things. Isn't that good? Um, that's great. But the reason um, I say that is because chronic pain syndromes, specifically neuropathy from whatever cause, whether it be post herpetic, or that's otherwise known as when you get the shingles and you have that neuro neuropathic pain that just is horrible afterwards, or, um, or neuropathy from diabetic neuropathy or neuropathy from other causes. Um, I have a, a, a guy with um, polyinflammatory chronic chronic polyinflammatory peripheral neuropathy um, from a series of rabies shots he had from a bat bite years ago. And um, anyway, there, there's just there, but these are very difficult pain syndromes to treat. If you have them, one of them, if you have um, someone you know who has them, you know how difficult it is. There are medications out there. None of them ever seem to really work that well. And people oftentimes, um, that's how people end up on pain medications, opiate pain medications, because they can find nothing else. Um, so this is super, super exciting. So we're going to be getting there. Okay. So, um, let's go. So the first one, um, this was a client who came to me. It was shortly after I did the, the death by calcium program and she, her big concern was osteoporosis. And so I was all, you know, equipped with like all kinds of stuff to talk with her about, but she had told, she told me about cucumber seed 
Uh, and I was like, oh my gosh, I have never heard of that. And I was a very, uh, you know, wanting to know. So I found this paper. Um, Cucumber seed polypeptides regulate RANKL induced osteoclastogenesis. So that's, um, you know, through, okay, osteoclastogenesis through um, OPG, rankle, rank, and all this inflammatory stuff. Okay, so there's these inflammatory pathways, blah, 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 blah. So the osteoclasts are the bone cell, the bone cells that destroy bone. And so they're regulating the cucumber seed polypeptides are regulating that. So I'm, I am just, it's just the abstract. So I am going to kind of read over it and I'm going to kind of, um, well, I'm going to just kind of like, let's just kind of look at it as we're sitting here. Um, and then I'll go. Okay. So treatment with different concentrations of cucumber seed uh, peptide effectively decrease the levels of rankle. That sounds like good for something that causes inflammation like that rankles me. And um, MCF, let's see what that is, MCSF. MCSF, they have to always give you the name before they use the abbreviation, um, but I don't see it there. Anyway, that's something bad, obviously. And rat serum, and it, it increased the expression of OPG, which is good. Um, oh, wait a minute. In, oh, in the rat model, therefore, different concentrations of CSP could ameliorate the loss of bone structure. This is where we were really getting with this and inhibit the formation of osteoclasts in rats. Okay, so in rats, but we're not rats, but still um, we're looking, this is what we look for. We look for things that work in different pathways. And um, Brud is with us today um, from uh, Indoor Poughkeepsie Gardens, uh, Indoor Gardens of Poughkeepsie, Indoor Organic Gardens of Poughkeepsie, I-O-G-P-K, um, with the sulforaphane powder, the, uh, the um, broccoli sprout and radish sprout powder that we carry here. Um, and this is how we, we look at things. We look at what do these things do? How do they work in cancer, right? How does sulforaphane work in cancer? Well, it works through certain pathways. And you can look at like things like chemotherapeutic drugs and you say, how does this chemotherapeutic drug work for this particular cancer? And then you go and you say, oh, it works through this such and so pathway. And then you say, and then you study, you research what natural things are out there, whether they be foods or herbs or yeah, what, what in the natural world, vitamins, amino acids, minerals, what works in those same pathways. Then we find our non-drug way of going about things as sort of a way to describe that. And um, so that's what we do. And that's what's being done here is we're finding, they're finding a way what is causing these osteoclasts to produce, to keep making more osteoclasts, which are the, the osteoblasts, right? You want those because they make the bone, um, the, the bone material grow. And you want the fewer osteoclasts. We talked about vitamin C when I did that whole thing on um, calcium and osteoporosis. Vitamin C increases osteoblast and decreases osteoclasts. So here we have another something that does that. So just if, if osteoporosis is a concern of yours, if you're looking for another tool in your kit for, um, for your bone health, cucumber seed. Now, I did go to look for cucumber seed uh, powder, and I have an email out to my client who told me about this, but I just sent it to her this morning. Um, the uh, cucumber seed powder here, the only cucumber seed powder I can find is sourced in China. And I know a lot of people are wigged out about things that are sourced in China. So maybe cucumber seed powder is just not the bone thing you're gonna do with all the other tools in the kit. However, I will say, 
sometimes we need to get things from the countries where they have traditionally been used. And China, China, traditional Chinese medicine is huge for health. It's been around for some 2000 years. And uh, there are certain things that are done, certain practices, like I talked about um, see, uh, um, deer antler velvet, in um, in a supplement called uh, in, a, in a ther in a therapeutic called Lurong, um, deer antler velvet. Well, these are classic to traditional Chinese medicine and in, to, in Korean uh, medicine, and practiced for years and years and years. So there are certain things that you're going to find done in China that we don't do over here, even in herbal medicine, because it's not native to how we treated. Um, health and disease. So sometimes um, I got this from China means it's just really cheap and maybe it's adulterated. Sometimes I got this from China means the Chinese know how to do this. They've been using this in medicine for thousands of years and maybe I need to get that particular thing from China. Um, so you know what I'm saying? Okay, also like um, for instance, uh, rhodiola root is native to Russia, we're native to sub Siberia. And the Ayurvedic herbs that, you know, people say, do you grow all your own herbs? I'm like, really? Um, well, I don't mean to, to be insulting, but I mean, we use herbs like from all over the world that certainly don't grow in a New England climate. Even if you have a greenhouse, you're not gonna be growing everything um, that you wanna use and other things you wanna pull from all of the different cultures of herbal medicine you want, um, definitely to have things that are native to, um, to that country. So, or that, um, that area like Ayurvedic medicine is Indian, right? So you're going to get your Ayurvedic herbs such as, um, oh gosh, uh, what am I thinking of now for the, um, if you have, oh, come on. It's for the intestines. It's right on my shelf out there. If don't worry, if you have no mother, as long as you have all right, somebody can tell me. I got to go look at it. Come on, what it is? It starts with a T. Trafala, Trafala. Yes. So things like that, you're, you know, are going to be sourced more from those countries. And so what we look for when we're looking for powders and things here at Wondrous Roots is we look for if it can be, some things can be certified organic, some things can't be. They can be certified wild harvested or cultivated without chemicals. And so you do your best to find your best sources, but you have to realize we're getting, we're sourcing things from the whole wide world. Um, when we look at herbal medicine, because herbal medicine has been practiced and is practiced worldwide. Um, so anyway, maybe somebody, somebody um, really interested out there can, uh, I was looking up how to dry your own cucumber seeds, but I just know myself, like I am, if I want cucumber seed powder, I am not saving my cucumber seeds and drying them. And I can't think of a single person I know who really would be wanting to do that. So um, anyway, um, and then also we've got up here, um, some other benefits of cucumber seed. Cucumber seeds often overlooked actually offer several health benefits packed with essential nutrients and uh, bioactive compounds. Cucumber seeds offer a wide range of advantages that contribute to overall well being. From supporting digestion to promoting heart health and providing skin nourishing properties, cucumber seeds have gained recognition for their potential therapeutic effects. Um, so here we go. Uh, blah, 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 blah. They commonly consume drawn or known for their crunchy texture and mild, refreshing taste. Um, oh, I will also say um, my client who's using the powder for hers heard the dose that she um, was informed of was three grams a day, three grams a day. So if you actually look at the product from um, here on Amazon. Uh, that's a 14.1 ounce. So you would just, that's 400 grams, right? So that kind of gives you an idea 400 divided by three, how many daily doses you'd be getting there. Okay. Okay. Um, let's close some windows so I don't slow my, my, screen my can't you know my my speed down so I don't get all jumpy all right how to eat cucumber seeds um they are 
low in calories, rich in essential nutrients, such as vitamins, uh, including vitamin K, vitamin C, several B vitamins and minerals, such as potassium and magnesium. Um, another reason to just really enjoy cucumbers just for your health, right? And um, throughout the summer when they're, they're nice and um, fresh. One simple way to is eat them raw, roasted. Okay, so you could ro ro rinse them, remove any residue, pat them dry and roast them. So that's a way to kind of do that. You could then put them in a grinder if you wanted to, or just munch on them, I guess, like you do pumpkin seeds. Um, blend into smoothies. Okay, that's a, that's a cool idea. You could just like take your cucumber, take the seeds out, right? Blend them into your smoothie and then eat your cucumber in your salad or whatever, and put the cucumber in the smoothie. Ground as a powder. So a fine powder. So you could like then cook them or whatever, dry them and grind them. So they're nutrient rich. They have um, antioxidants. We talk about those all the time. Uh, digestive health, the fiber content in cucumber seeds can support healthy digestion. Hydration, um, they, have the, they have a high water content. I wouldn't say they would once they're dry. Um, skin health, support skin health, weight management, low in calories, blah, blah, blah. Heart health, these aren't, these aren't really knocking my socks off really. Like I wouldn't like be like, you know, scarfing down the cucumber seeds for these things because there's so many other things you can do, but the other benefits if you're doing it for your bone health. Oh, we come to bone health. Um, they say minerals like magnesium, which is essential for maintaining strong and healthy bones, but that's like so pales in comparison, comparison to that study I just um, uh, was referring to where we're actually talking about um, the osteoclast and the osteo, yeah, the osteoclast, um, inhibiting the osteoclast formation um, through the rankle pathway. Okay, that's gonna be on the pop-up quiz. Blood sugar regulation, anti-inflammatory, eye health, uh, beta care detoxification, that's good. So yeah, that'd be a nice smoothie addition, especially this time of year, right? We're in detoxification season, um, spring, early summer. Uh, classic time to detoxify fall as well. Um, getting wet ready for the hardier seasons of, of uh, winter and summer. Um, Anti-aging, um, hair and nail health. So they contain um, silica. Okay, so that's cool because silica really is important for the hair and your nails and, and all of that kind of thing. And so horsetail is an herb that comes to mind for me when I think of that. Um, silica, you'll also find silica just separately put into as a mineral into um, hair support formulas, right, for hair growth. Um, and then um, cucumber seeds may have some side effects, one of which is cur curbitin, which can cause in large quantities nausea, vomiting, diarrhea. You'll know if you've had too much, but I doubt anybody would probably eat too many of those. So anyway, that's, um, that's pretty interesting. Go here and get rid of that. Okay, now this is really interesting and, and it's kind of like fascinating because I chose sea buckthorn oil when I was coming up with a um, eye drop that had adding an oil to my eye drops. And um, you guys know I make the... Um, I make, I make the um, MSM eye drops. I just added magnesium as another option to my original. And then I have one with sea buckthorn and I do the sea buckthorn one because um, I had a man whose mahobian mo glands and the eyelids didn't make the oils as like they should. And so his eyes were lacking the normal oils that should be in the eyes. And um, so I chose sea buckthorn oil because it is so rich in antioxidants and antioxidant activity like MSM is very antioxidant, very anti-inflammatory. So what can we do that adds oil, but also adds this high anti-inflammatory property? Um, and so I chose sea buckthorn oil. Well, I was just meeting with a client, um, a new client with a Sjogren's uh, syndrome diagnosis. And I was telling her about omega-7 for Sjogren's syndrome, it's actually been studied and omega-7 we get from sea buckthorn berry oil. So sea buckthorn is a berry. So I'm gonna go back to my share. Um,
and um, go here. So this is really, um, really awesome. And, I, and it's like, we hear about these other omegas and I'm like, Becky, I mean, it, again, it's one of those things that um, I did not, um, I just haven't thought, you know, I've known about, but I haven't thought about taking myself. I just brought a bottle home for me. And I don't have it on my website yet. I have some new products I have to get up on the website and that one will go up um, this week, but you can get, um, I use, I have stocking a um, new chapter product of um, sea buckthorn berry um, uh, blend, omega-7 blend. Um, but anyway, a hydrating power of omega-7 from sea buckthorn. So not just for Sjogren's, what is Sjogren's syndrome? It's an autoimmune condition that basically dries out all your tissues. And so it's really horrible because people with Sjogren's end up with very dry skin. They have dry bowels. They have dry, you know, vaginal tissue. Their mucosal membranes are dry. Okay. So, um, they can have dry, definitely dry eyes, dry mouth. Um, and so one of the big challenges with Sjogren's working with people with Sjogren's is to keep them hydrated. And, um, so I've got a whole, uh, PDF that I'm going to go down to in a second on, um, on that, all of that, but here's a, a page as well. The hydrating power of omega seven from C buckthorn. Uh, there's more to omega fatty acids than just omega-3. There's a whole spectrum of these beneficial nutrients, including omega-7. I recommend a complete sea buckthorn extract. This is Terry's uh, Talks Nutrition. Um, so anyway, protects your hearts, arteries, and blood vessels, keeps skin looking young and hydrated, soothes mucosal tissues, and stops ulcers, because right, your stomach and all of that, stops the dryness and itching of Sjogren's syndrome and re relieves dry eyes and reduces inflammation, hence its whole um, role in the MSM eye drops with C. buckthorn berry. Um, when you hear about omega fatty acids, omega-3 probably comes to mind, but there are a range of other omega fatty acids which are just as necessary. And one, especially omega-7 is the focus of this, this talk, um, Terry Talks Nutrition. So um, omega-7 from C. buckthorn, it's found in just a few foods, including fish and nuts. However, one of the best sources of this rare fatty acid is the berry of the sea buckthorn plant. In fact, the pearl-shaped berry is commonly referred to as a nutrient bomb because it contains more than 200 bioactive compounds, including vitamins, antioxidants, essential fatty acids, and plant sterols. Plant sterols modulate immune system action, which is really cool because in Sjogren's, that's what you need to do too. So in somebody with Sjogren's syndrome, I also am using glutathione. Oh, I got to say it. And, um, <clears throat> and, um, and Moducare, plant sterols and sterolins, right? Ster plant sterols, super important for balancing the TH1, TH2 response of the immune system, setting an imbalance, in balance, not imbalance, in balance so that um, you don't have that hyper attack of the immune system on your, on your normal body tissues resulting in one form of disease or another. Um, okay. Uh, even though sea buckthorn berries are an excellent source of omega-7, the seeds, here we go back to seeds, um, are also provide a great many nutrients. So having a combined source of berry extract and seed oil is important. Um, anyway, relieves dry eyes and improves microcirculation in the eyes, the brain, and the skin increases good cholesterol and reduces harmful effects of bad cholesterol, heals and soothes the stomach and intestinal tract. So we might think of this as perhaps being good for people with acid reflux or damage from acid reflux up, in, up, up into, the, um, into the esophagus or in the, 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 the stomach and the uh, du duodenum, uh, especially of the uh, small intestine. Um, restores skin moisture and elasticity, promotes tissue healing, boosts the immune system and fights inflammation. That would be what I was just talking about. That's the plant sterile um, part of it. Um, aged skin is less blah, 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 blah. We know wrinkle formation is due. We know all about wrinkle formation, don't we? Uh, skin aging doesn't necessarily have to do with how old you are. It can be accelerated by poor nutrition, lack of sleep, excessive sun exposure, environmental toxin, stress, or combination. Fortunately, see buckthorn oil protects and restores skin while helping it retain moisture and elasticity. Hence the reason that we put sea buckthorn berry oil in our, it's in all of our wonder skin uh, creams and lotions. Um, 
In fact, a clinical study showed that women average age of 61 using sea buckthorn saw an improvement of skin moisture by 49%, 33% in the first month elasticity by 26% and wrinkles by 9.2%. Essentially, it slows down the aging process. It slowed down the aging process of the skin. So this is why, you know, take it internally. Um, I just, like I said, I haven't been doing that. And I just, um, I just took a bottle home so that I can do that um, last night. Okay. Um, and then, uh, Sea buckthorn berry and seed oil heals mucous membranes throughout the digestive tract, including esophagus, stomach, and intestines. That means it can protect against ulcers and help existing gastric ulcers heal faster. In one study, it outperformed the prescription drug, uh, drug cimetidine, a brand name is Tagamet, which is used to lower stomach acid production. So add this to the repertoire of things we do for people with that horrible acid reflux. Um, that's a lot of people. Stop. Sjogren syndrome. So this is, you know, that's pretty a bold statement. Um, Sjogren's syndrome is an autoimmune disease that causes inflammation and dryness in the mouth, tear glands, lining of the bronchial airways and vagina. Sjogren's syndrome can also be associated with rheumatoid arthritis, lupus, and scleroderma. A lot of times you can get an overlap with those um, autoimmune conditions. Uh, because about around 90% of patients with Sjogren's syndrome are female, the condition is often associated with vaginal dryness, which causes pain during intercourse and recurrent vaginal infections. A three-month clinical trial of women with Sjogren's syndrome found that sea buckthorn oil improved vaginal mucosa, reduced burning, itching, pain, secretion, and dryness. And that's really good because this is like taking this internally, taking this internally so that you're getting this wherever those tissues need that um, omega-7 action are, are getting it. Um, it's not something that you just um, you know apply um, topically. Stops inflammation has been used topically to heal burns, wounds. Um, oh, Kathy says, um, Dr. Kathy says to everybody, yes, internally, because I bought this oil from Mountain Rose Herb and use it on my face. It stains everything, pillowcase sheets. Yes, exactly. And we do put it in our, we put it in our, um, our oil and it gives it, it totally changes the color, even though we put it in a certain percentage. It's not like a main oil, like our olive oil and um, grapeseed oil and, and fractionated coconut oil, but it is very colorful. Um, those buckthorn, sea buckthorn berries are very red. Um, so yeah. Um, sea buckthorn oil has, be, has been traditionally used topically to heal burns, wounds, and dermatitis. Um, the extract I recommend reduces inflammation and improves the symptoms of atopic dermatitis taken inter internally. It also relieves pain, relieves dry eyes, uh, blah, blah, blah. After three months, um, contact lens use is a major contributor to dry eyes and fatigue. In fact, half of the men and women with dry eyes in a sea buckthorn clinical study were contact lens wearers. After three months, sea buckthorn reduced redness and burning sensations by reducing the inflammation in the eyes and by helping build a healthy fatty acid balance. Another reason we have it in the eye drops. Fatty acid and a healthy fatty, fatty acid balance help build the composition of tear film produced by the mahomium glands of the edge, at the edges of the eyelids. I was talking about that. The lipid or fat content of that film is what helps prevent water and moisture loss from the eyes. So it's an important factor in dry eye syndrome and other conditions of dry eye, of eye dryness. So definitely if you're a MSM eye drop user um, and you've not tried the ones with the sea buckthorn, I recommend probably the Cadillac of the whole um, four options would be the sea buckthorn with the MSM with magnesium with sea buckthorn. Uh, protects your heart and cardiovascular system. Sea buckthorn reduces the heart risk of heart disease by boosting good cholesterol, reducing bad cholesterol. It also helps prevent the formation of clots. That's like even more um, significant to me. Inhibits inflammation. That's even more significant to me. And improves microcirculation. And that's even more <laughs> significant in the tiny blood vessels of the eyes, brain, and skin. Because what goes when we age? Circulation suffers, but it's the microcirculation that suffers the most. The very small, tiny blood vessels of the eyes, the brain, the skin, and I might add the, um, the nerves and the kidneys which is why with diabetic, with diabetes, we often see diabetic retinopathy. 
of the eyes, right? Diabetic nephropathy of the kidneys, diabetic neuropathy of the nerves. Okay, so then I want to just go to um, this one. And this is actually Terry's nutrition actually who um, did this. This is kind of like that whole talk. Um, so just kind of breeze through that. You can see it as I do it. We kind of just went against that. Omega fatty acids in general. Um, omega-6. So the, yeah, omega-6s, the, the number relates to the position of a double bond on the fatty acids molecular chain. That's why they have different numbers. Um, okay, attention tends to focus on omega-3. Examples of omega fatty acids. So you have omega-3, the um, E, the EPA, right? And the DHA and the alpha linoleic acid. So um, cold water fish, your best source there. Flax is, um, is difficult because a lot of us cannot convert. I did a program on that a while back. Um, omega-5. That's another one we never hear about, but that's from pomegranate. And we know how beneficial pomegranate is um, to our health. Um, Omega-6, very, very rich in antioxidants. I would say a superfood like sea buckthorn berry, if you wanted to put it that way. Omega-6, um, this is the one we want less of, the linoleic acid from vegetable oil, corn, sunflower, all of that stuff. Um, Omega-7, Pomatoleic acid from sea buckthorn berry oil, macadamia nuts. And I will say in our skincare product and in, in our base oil, we also have the macadamia nut oil. So, so kind of, and then omega-9 from olive oil. Um, so sea buckthorn berry itself, um, adapted to extreme conditions. The sea buckthorn plant is native to dry, cold areas high in the mountains. And that's why it's so um, robust because it has to protect itself from the extreme conditions. And so it has to generate all of these antioxidants and things to like protect itself from being like killed by its, um, its extreme, the, the extreme conditions that it lives in. Um, Asia, the mountainous areas of Asia, as well as the most of Northern Europe, used medicinally in Tibet and other parts of Asia for over a thousand years. In modern Europe, it's consumed as food and juices, jams and jellies. And now it's being, research is proving its benefit for conditions ranging from heart disease prevention to dry eyes. Um, even Dr. Oz loves sea buckthorn oil, or does he? Uh, he uh, recommends sea buckthorn or as oil, sea buckthorn as a weight loss, loss superfood. Dieters amazed with the results. Well, there you go. That's the kind of thing that'll get people to use it, you know, first, right? Most people will be like, what? That's going to help me lose weight. I'll take a double dose. Um, anyway, you can read that. You, you can click on this in my newsletter, read more about that later. Um, this year, Dr. Oz, oh, he says, is advising to avoid sea buckthorn oil because it contains palmitic acid, which he calls inflammatory, and take purified omega-7 from fish instead. Um, he says, do you avoid these inflammatory foods? They all naturally contain palmitic acid, fish. Palmitic acid is the primary fat acid in a number of fatty acid in a number of fish species used for food, including anchovy and shod, hake and mullet. Nuts, both macadamia nuts and pistachios have about 10% palmitic acid. His point is like, do you avoid all of this? Like olive oil has palmitic acid. So he's saying, Dr. Oz, you're being misleading. Um, sea buckthorn oil contains both palmitic acid and palmo palmitoleic acid. The amount of palmitic acid is very small in comparison to what is consumed from other sources, such as olive oil or cheese. It's an acid is natural and necessary in the human body when combined with other fatty acids, healthy fats and natural ra ratios. It has not been shown to have any adverse effects. Purified omega-7 is extremely processed, refined, unstable fish oil, and has less omega-7 per dose than in sea buckthorn oil. So there, he's putting that to rest. Okay. Um, Anyway, he's talking now about why we can get it. Why sea buckthorn is special, omega fatty acids. The seeds contain three, six, and nine. The berries, the berry contains seven and nine. 
And nine people often use too, omega nine, we get from like uh, evening primrose oil and uh, borage seed oil. And those uh, people will use who have skin conditions. So again, um, the berry has both the seven and the nine, and the seven being huge for the skin anyway, and for that dryness. Vitamins E and C, beta carotene, plant sterols, again, modulating the proper function of the immune system, um, helping you ward off getting sick, uh, resisting infection, but at the same time, uh, calming down a overactive immune system as seen in, uh, in autoimmune illnesses. Minerals. It works through its antioxidant, anti-inflammatory, immune system modulation, strengthening the cardiovascular system, and a mucous membrane tissue regenerator. It's huge. It's like really quite, quite incredibly remarkable. Um, the mucous membranes we went through, the digestive system, the respiratory system. So again, the lungs, the urogenital system, the inner surface of the eyes. Again, great reason to put the, the oil right to the eye. Um, Okay, problems with mucous membranes. They, even healthy people can suffer from dry, irritated mucous membranes. Specific diseases, conditions associated with mu mucous membranes, main problems, Sjogren's syndrome, dry eyes, dry mouth, menopausal inflammation, peptico, we talked about that. Sjogren's syndrome, we talked about that a little bit. Um, conventional medicine has little to offer for Sjogren's. I mean, basically like all of the room, all of the autoimmune illnesses like lupus, like scleroderma, like rheumatoid arthritis, um, they, they focus on medications that dampen the immune system response. But of course that comes with the other side of it, right? You now you get sick easily. And also, um, your, your immune system is depressed in ways that lead to an easier chance of developing cancer, for instance, or something like, um, oh, the guy who, who was with the Eagles who died and he had had a autoimmune condition for years. And he had been on Humira, I think for years and years and years, and eventually kept getting pneumonia from a uh, respiratory infection because of this immunosuppressive drug. So you want to not use those if you can not use those. Um, so this is kind of interesting and with Sjogren's syndrome and the clinical research, um, double blind randomized crossed over study, women with Sjogren's syndrome receiving either three grams daily of sea buckthorn oil or a control ingredient, coconut oil. The study lasted six months and you can see a clear, a clear um, value there on all, all, all of these parameters, itching, burning, pain, dryness, eye dryness, and mouth dryness. Three grams daily of sea buckthorn oil. Dry eye mouth, okay, we talked about that. We've kind of covered that, covered that, talked about that, talked about that. One gram twice daily, improvement in skin moisture. Um, so one gram, What is that? Is that like corner? Oh, th these are units of measurement of dry skin hydration. Okay, so skin hydration. This is better hydration. Okay, okay. Baseline after a month, after three months. Sea buckthorn and skin elasticity. Baseline one month, three months. That's really great because that's what you're trying to get when you've lost your collagen. When you when we age, we're losing collagen, so that's why we're doing everything we can. MSM powder, glycine, collagen supplements, things like that. So here we have another little tool in that skin kit. Sea buckthorn and wrinkle depth. So here you have the wrinkle depth is greater here. One month, three months. Hmm, very impressive. Um, good for the heart. We all want that. Benefits documented in research studies include, and this is really good because Triglycerides are the one thing that really I like to see people get under control. Um, I like to see balanced lipid panel, but I'm, you know me and cholesterol and the LDL and all of the hoopla that surrounds that, but triglycerides I pay attention to. Um, increased HDL, that's also a really good thing. Um, decreased fibrinogen, okay? So that's another whole thing. That's what I use serapeptase for, decreasing the fibrinogen, reducing the risk of clots. 
reduce severity and occurrence of atherosclerotic plaque formation and reducing the inflammatory marker C-reactive protein, which is um, a marker for cardiovascular inflammation. So dealing with the inflammation as well as, you know, through all of that antioxidant, um, the antioxidant is what do antioxidants do. They go after the um, free radical damage, um, the reactive oxygen species. Uh, that's one of the big things we need to do. And that's where our big players come in. In most cases, they play a role like, the sulforaphane I was talking about from the broccoli sprouts, um, they, they, bring, they bring a huge, huge hit against reactive oxygen species, which cause damage system-wide throughout our bodies. Um, okay, blah, 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 blah. Any health condition involving inflammation. That's beautiful. That's wonderful. What to look for. Um, two to three grams daily chewed and the oil swished in the mouth. Okay. This is very interesting because Brad just sent me, um, this morning, I think it was Brad. I read that piece you sent me about, um, how it's better to take things. If you can put them in your mouth first, like you do the broccoli sprout and radish sprout powder, the veggie powder because of what's going on in the mouth with the amylase and the, the, with the, um, with the um, digestive enzymes beginning there and the flavor and things like that. So I think that this is very interesting. Um, capsules can be chewed and the oil swished in the mouth. The taste is relatively mild and bathing the mouth tissues directly can be helpful for certain conditions. P right to your point, uh, Brad, that you, um, that you sent me this morning. Um, yes right? What it does for you, what, when it's actually in your mouth, um, never mind once it gets into your system, but the topical things effects that it has right there. Very, very cool. Um, and here's some books for more reading. Um, oh gosh, well, I'm going to have to get that one. Sing versus sea buckthorn, a multi-purpose wonder plant. Oh yes, I have to have that. Well, so I have to see where I can cram another bookcase. All right. Um, fascinating. Now, I'm very excited to get to this whole thing. Okay. Now I got to tell you about how I found out about this. So um, I mentioned briefly, um, well, I was looking for something for a uh, someone who had a, a, um, experienced a um, drug induced, and it's not the guy I was talking about, but a drug induced um, neuropathic issue. And I talked to one of my great buddies, Jean Gresh, who's a compound pharmacist in Connecticut about this. And Jean is, is amazing. And he had a, he said, I've been working on a topical for neuropathy. And he was explaining it to me. And one of the things he wrote down, I wrote down in my notes was PEA, because I just remember he said something about, this is really incredible. This, um, this, it does this and, and then, and then it, it ignites, you know, the, the PEA. And I was like, wow, I've never heard of PEA. So I came to my desk, um, you know, another, and I had, I still had the scratch pad that I'd written that on. I'm like PEA. And then I was looking for something a little bit later for neuropathy. And I saw this and I was like, wait a minute, that's what Gene was telling me about. And he just mentioned it in passing. So this is how this all happened in my head. And, um, and so this was really um, astounding. So I have someone who had a reaction to an antibiotic and, um, in, in conjunction with her catecholamine transferase um, genetic defects, I found a connection between how the, what's going on with that particular drug um, interacted with the uh, COMPT, the COMT gene not working properly. And one of the things that we found there was um, uh, either um, sterolepholamide which is um, SEA, which I also carry, but I haven't put on my website yet, and uh, PEA. So these work amazingly. And this opened like this whole new world of discovery that is now um, just 
so, uh, I'm so hopeful for, for people um, with chronic pain issues. So I want to go right there um, to this. And um, it's not just the pain part of it, though, is it? It's the, it's the inflammation itself. But let's look at this. So what are these actually? What is pomatola? What is pomatoyl lefanolamide, PEA? I have got to practice saying that <clears throat> so it can just roll off my tongue. <clears throat> Excuse me. But of chronic pain caused by different etiopathogenesis. In other, in other words, it's not just pain due to fibromyalgia. It's not just pain due to diabetic neuropathy. It's not just pain due to something else. Uh, um, it is pain do basically to anything, rheumatoid arthritis, psoriatic arthritis. Uh, do, you, do you hear what I'm saying? This, is, this could be absolutely huge. And it works through the cannabinoid system of the body, the endocannabinoid system. So think about um, using CBD or, or medical marijuana or you name it, but using cannabinoids, we have the endocannabinoid system and we have cannabinoid receptors throughout. Um, the body, the brain, the brain is part of the body, but I don't know why I always say that because I, I, I don't know. I do you do that too. I just always tend to think of the body as from the neck down and the brain is up above the neck. Um, but anyway, okay. So the objective of this study was to assess the efficacy and the safety of PEA, an endogenous fatty acid that endogenous means we make it ourselves. Um, it's an amide. So think um, andamide. Andamide we get from chocolate, andamide we get from CBD, okay? Belonging to the N-acetylamines family and reducing pain severity in patients with pain associated to different pathological conditions. This was an observational study conducted on 610 patients who were unable to effectively control chronic pain with standard therapies. PEA 600 milligrams was administered twice daily for three weeks, followed by single daily dosing for four weeks. Um, in addition to standard analgesic therapies or as single therapy. So some of you like, okay, you're on gabapentin or you're on one of the other ones, right? Or you're on um, meloxicam or you're on something like that to, um, to deal with your pain, or you might be using CBD to deal with, or you might be using something in the natural world to deal with your pain. But so they did a group using probably medications, I would think in this setting, um, you know, prescription medications such as gabapentin or, or, or melox meloxicam or something like that. Um, maybe ibuprofen or Aleve or something like that. Uh, but anyway, other stand standard analgesic therapies or a single therapy. The primary outcome measured was the mean score pain severity evaluated by the numeric rating scale. Safety was also evaluated. Results, PEA treatment significantly decreased the mean score pain intensity evaluated in all patients who completed the study. The PEE effect, PEA effect was independent of the pain associated pathological condition. Wow. I mean, that is like sweet. That is so cool. PEA induced decrease of pain intensity was PEA induced decrease of pain intensity was present also in patients without concomitant analgesic therapy without using anything else. Importantly, PEA showed no adverse effects. Wahoo. Wahoo. Because what medication out there for pain doesn't have concerning adverse effects? Conclusions. In this study, PEA was, was effective and safe in the management of chronic pain in different pathological conditions. Um, and I want to just go down here. Uh, um, okay. P PEA is an endogenous fatty acid amide. It is a congener of the endocannabinoid an anandamide AEA that belongs to a class of lipid mediators, the superfamily of N acetyl of uh, ethanolamines. PEA reportedly inhibits the release of pro inflammatory mediators from activated mast cells. This is huge because this is going on with so mast cell activation is going on in so many pain syndromes. This is massive, think histamine, um, and reduces the recruitment and activation of mast cells at sites of nerve injury, events associated with anti-allogenic and anti-hyperalgesic. So that's anti-pain and anti, 
um, pain, uh, hyper pain, um, effects in a model of neuropathic pain, neuropathic pain. Moreover, after peripheral nerve injury, as well as following spinal neuroinflammation of spinal cord injury, PEA treatment inhibited microglia, microglia activation and the recruitment of mast cells into spinal cord. PEA effects on chronic and neuropathic pain syndromes have been confirmed in numerous clinical conditions. So the person I'm talking about who had this reaction to the drug who ended up with the, um, the neuropathic uh, inflammatory condition. So Gene Gresh, uh, his formula that we used, actually he uh, said to uh, apply along the spinal column, right along the spinal column. That's exactly what, what he was getting at. That's exactly what he was getting at. These observations prompted us to evaluate PEA effect on chronic pain associated with different pathological conditions in patients who were undergoing standard therapies with unsatisfactory results, or in those patients who discontinued standard therapy because of important side effects. In addition, a positive outcome would support the concept of a common underlying. This is cool. A common root, right? We're getting to the root. A common underlying inflammatory algesic mechanism and the diverse pathological condition studied and which, and which is amenable to PEA treatment. Unlike currently used analgesics whose mode of action controls only singular components of systemic pain. Do you see how huge this is? This is remarkable and I can't believe I'm just learning about it. I'm, I'm blown away. So I just sent um, my guy with, um, had bitten by a bat several years ago, three on his third shot, Rabies shot, he ended up with um, uh, inflammatory polyneuropathy. Um, let me just, if I can get this. He ended up with polyinflammatory uh, neuropathy. He told me yesterday that, because um, I got in touch with him right away. I've got other some other people I've got to get in touch with too. And I think one of you is normally here, but I don't think I see you today. Um, um, got to get right in touch with her. Um, but anyway, there's many, but there's just some that really come to my mind because of the intense, um, the intense, uh, duration long. And I just started it with somebody also with, um, she's been on gabapentin, was on gabapentin for years and she now, um, is on another drug, but we're using this in combination, but anyway, for, um, this, um, gentleman I'm talking about. So what's really interesting is Jean Gresh, who was is the one who tipped me off about PEA. Um, he, his compound pharmacy is in Connecticut and this client is in Connecticut and he knows Gene Gresh and he goes to um, Dr. Um, Nicholas Palermo, who is a um, osteopath in Connecticut. And he and Gene are like really great friends. And he and Gene and I have gone off to conferences together and things like that. You kind of get that. Um, oh, looks like we have um, a, um, some a, a comment, Joe, I'm going to get right with you. I'm just going to finish this up because I want to give you my full attention. Um, and he said, I had sent him the information. He said, I had an appointment. He said to me yesterday, I had an appointment with Dr. P this morning. And um, I told him about this and he said, he didn't know anything about it. And I said, yeah. And it's, I said, it's so interesting because it was Jean. So now I've got to get in touch with Jean and Dr. P um, and let them know that I'm using this now and that it was really Jean who tipped me off about it. But anyway, I sent, um, I sent this gentleman a bottle of the PEA and I sent him a bottle of CBD because it makes sense. And I've read in other literature that if you use something like CBD, a cannabinoid along with this, it inten will intensify the action of it. And CBD of course is very safe to use. It's non-psychoactive. And so um, he had said he had a medical marijuana card but his medical marijuana um, it, that made him his atrial fibrillation kick up so he doesn't use it. Um, and he also said that Dr. P said, it looks like he has fibromyalgia now and the two tend to the poly chronic polyinflammatory neuropathy and fibromyalgia tend to, you tend to see them together in another whole paper I have, I see PEA as related to fibromyalgia. That's another big thing we can't seem to get a handle on. So, um, wow, very exciting. So now I'm going to go to Joe. Hi, Joe. Hi. Hi. Uh, I have a friend who occasionally suffers from sciatica. 
Would this uh, stuff help her? Yes, I think it could. Yes, 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 absolutely. That makes so much sense because sciatica actually is a nerve, a nerve um, pain. Um, sure. Yeah. I would think that that would be a great application for a try. Yeah. All right. I'll, uh, I'll email you and uh, set it up so you can send us some. Okay. That sounds great, Joe. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, yeah. What I want to say about that too, is um, that in the trial that uh, the study that I just uh, was uh, referring to, they used 600 milligrams twice a day. The capsules I have, are 400 milligrams. So I'm like 400 milligrams three times a day equals 600 milligrams twice a day. What was very compelling was they did um, 600 milligrams for four weeks, no, three weeks. And then they went to um, half that 600. They did, so they did 1200 milligrams a day for four weeks, for three weeks. And then they went to uh, the study, took them into four more weeks of half that dose and they had those good results. So um, this is just uh, super exciting. I think um, I, I just am so glad to um, tell you about it. And because uh, I'm sure it, if it doesn't apply to you, it applies to somebody, you know, and could be could be a real game changer for somebody, because if you know, it, any uh, chronic pain is, is just horrible. And um, it's a big, big problem in our um, population today. So anyway, we are I'm 10 minutes after as usual. I love this over radio because I can just ramble and keep going. But um, I'm going to say goodbye. Have a wonderful weekend. And um, I'll be back next week. Not sure what my topic will be, but um, it'll be something I'm sure. Um, it'll be something that I'm really interested in. And uh, you seem to be interested in the same things I am. So um, we'll do that. Take care. Thanks for coming in. Thanks for being with me today. And um, goodbye.